Hello everyone. Welcome to another vocabulary lesson. I hope that you were able to use the words that I taught you in my other lessons. And I hope that you're ready for another set of words. So let's get started. This first word is a word that refers to something that is trashy, worthless, or what you would consider to be rubbish. And that word is quisquilius. Quisquilius. Something that is worthless, like trash. Quisquilius. This next word means an imaginary place of high romance. An imaginary place of high romance. And that word is grow stark. Grow stark. I believe that refers to a place that we assign a great deal of romance to looking back on it, say, King Arthur's Court, or the White House under Jackie Kennedy, or some place like that. Some place that we look back on and see it as a place of high romance. But it is imaginary. It is something that we are kind of placing on it. Grow stark. This next word means an uncontrollable craving for alcohol. So someone who has a very strong desire to drink adult beverages. They would be suffering from dipsomania. Dipsomania. A very strong desire to drink This next word means to go counterclockwise or to go in a contrary direction against the flow. And that word is Wittershins. Wittershins. To go in a counterclockwise direction or in a direction that is against the motion of everything else around it. Wittershins. This next word means something that is softly radiant, like a light or a flame. It also has to deal with someone who deals lightly and gracefully with a subject of discussion. So someone who is diplomatic and has a lot of tact in their conversations. You can say that person is lambent, lambent. Someone who doesn't lose their cool easily and can talk about difficult subjects in a way that are not offensive. Lambent. This next word means to complain fretfully or to whine and complain. This is a word I've just recently been hearing more of, and that is whinge. Whinge. I think it is a particularly British type of word, but I've been hearing more and more people use it to talk about someone who is complaining. Whinge. Not necessarily a compliment. This next word refers to the top of someone's head. Primarily the top of someone's head who is bald. And that word is pate. Pate is the top of your head. You use a hat to protect your pate.
this next word, refers to someone who continually commits crimes. Specifically, even after they've been caught and punished, it does not deter them and they go right back to committing crimes. That person is recidivist. Recidivist. To continue to commit crimes even after you have been punished for it. This next word has a very specific meaning, and that is to stone to death. So this is the verb that carries the action of stoning someone to death. And that word is lapidate. Lapidate. You do not want to be lapidated for a crime. It is extremely painful. This next word refers to the art of bullfighting. Something that is very popular in Spain. And that is Taramaki, Taramaki, the art of bullfighting. This next word refers to the faculty of accidentally making someone happy, or for an unexpected discovery or connection between two things that is a very pleasant discovery. And that is serendipity. Serendipity is a happy discovery of connection or discovery of something that you did not notice or know before, but that you discover quite by accident. Serendipity. This next word is characteristics of a person having a gloomy or forbidding appearance. Someone who is broody or scowling and gloomy. Kind of like Eeyore in Winnie the Pooh. They are Saturnine. Saturnine refers to the god Saturn, who was one of the older gods and of a much more grumpy disposition than some of the others. This next word refers to someone who makes up new words. If that is your job of making up new words, you are a neologist. Neologist. They make up new words. It sounds like a neat job. I wonder how you get it. This word refers to someone who is bitingly sarcastic. Someone who can cut you with their words. They are mordant. Mordant. If someone is saturnine and mordant, they're probably not a lot of fun to be around. This word means Neglect or a wrongful action committed by a public official. So someone who is in high office or any kind of office and should know better, but they do something wrong or they neglect to do something that they are supposed to, that is known as misprision. Misprision. I think this word should be used a lot more than it is. It's a great word to use. Misprision. And 
in this next word refers to something that has wavy lines or motion or is sinuous like a snake or a wave on the ocean. And it is vermiculate. Vermiculate. Something very beautiful and sinuous and wavy. Vermiculate. And this is a fun word that means affectedly cute or quaint, overly precious or nice. And that word is twee. Twee. I think you could probably say that the My Little Pony franchise is very twee, overly cute and precious. This next word refers to a draped female figure that is supporting an entablature. So this term is a term of architecture, where in a building, say like a Greek temple, instead of regular columns, you have a draped female figure who is supporting the roof or the portico. And that figure is called caryated. Caryated. This next word is someone who is stupid, dull, obtuse, and not very much fun to be around. That person is Beotian. Beotian. So that is a good word to have in your vocabulary so you can use it when you need to refer to someone who is being dull or stupid. Beotian. This word is the offense of frequently stirring up lawsuits or quarrels, bringing lawsuits that are frivolous and doing it often is known as barretry. Barretry. If you are referring to something that is characteristic of the country or rustic, but also it could mean unpolished or uncouth or uncivilized, someone who is a hayseed coming from the country, they are agrestic. Agrestic. But it could also have a positive connotation of the lifestyle of farming and bringing in the crops and enjoying the good of the land. Agrestic. This next word is something that is overly sentimental or having a sickly taste to it. And that is mawkish. Mawkish. I would imagine that the line between something that is twee and something that is mawkish is a very fine line. And some people would say that some things cross it. This is a fun word. It refers to the graffiti that is found in a restroom. So if you've ever wanted to know what to call that type of artwork or literary expression, you now know that it is called Latrinalia. Latrinalia. The graffiti and writings that you find in restrooms. And apparently, this is an a old and very ancient tradition. There has been latrinalia that has been found dating back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. This next word refers to something that is loud or discordant, but it can also mean a hangover. 
and it can also mean a state of depression or bewilderment. So you can use this word in many different settings. I think the loud discordant noises is fairly closely related to the hangover part of the word, and probably also related to the depression or bewilderment part. So think of this much more as a description of someone who has a hangover. And that word is Katzenyammer. Katzenyammer. So, a description of someone experiencing a hangover or a noise that is loud and discordant, like someone would think a sound had who had a hangover. Katzenyammer. This next word refers to something that is in a jumble or a hodgepodge of things or a, a melody, not like a tune melody, but like melody like a selection of things that are only very loosely related to each other. And that is gallimorphy. Gallimorphy, a hodgepodge jumble of things together. Gallimorphy. This next word stands for someone who is insolent, insolently abusive and humiliating. Someone who regularly makes other people feel small and humiliated. That person is contumelious. Contumelious. Not a pleasant person to be around. This word describes something that is turned up at the tip, especially talking about someone's nose that turns up at the tip. It is a French word, and the word is retroussé. Retroussé. So that is a word you described as something, particularly a nose, that has an upward pointing tip. Retrousse. This is a word that sounds very opposite of what it actually means. It means something that has attractiveness, something that is attractive, something that you would want to be around or draws you close. But the word is Pocritude. Pocritude. It doesn't necessarily sound very attractive as a word, but that's what it means. Pocritude, or attractiveness. And this word is a very interesting word I discovered. It means a low, whispering sound such as the rustle of leaves or the whisper of someone across the room. Something that is very soft, low sound. It is Scythiorism. Scythiorism. A very low whispering sound. Scythiorism. This word refers to things that are greasy with fat, fat and greasy. So probably mostly referring to food, but if you use it to refer to a person, it would probably be a 
a great insult. That word is pinguid. Pinguid. Something that is fat and greasy is pinguid. This next word is the vertical groove between your nose and your upper lip. That little dimple or ridge that runs between the two is the philtrum. Philtrum. So now you know what to call that. The philtrum. And this word describes a condition that we all feel from time to time. It is the numbness caused by pressure on a nerve, such as when one's foot is asleep. So that pins and needle type feeling, or the numbness when you've been sitting in a position too long, and your foot or your hand or your arm goes to sleep. That is abdormition. Abdormition. So if you're feeling abdormition, you're feeling those pins and needles, usually in your extremities. Abdormition. This word is a word that pertains anything that is pertaining to the day before yesterday. It's a very useful word. So, something that did not happen yesterday, but the day before that. That word is nudiestrician. Nudiestrician. The day before yesterday. We have just a few more left here. This word means honor, or prestige, or reputation. That word is izat. Izat. This refers to someone's honor, or to their prestige, or their place in society that is high. Izat. This word refers to the placing of two hands together to form a bowl, or more specifically, the amount that can be held by two hands cupped together. So it is a form of measurement. It is a galpin. A galpin. So you could order a galpin of rice or a galpin of nails and have a rough estimate of about how much you would get. And this last one is something that is pleasing to the eye, similar to attractiveness, but this is something that is specifically very nice to look at, whether it refers to a person or a painting or a sculpture or any other object or animal that is pleasing to the eye, it is isam. Isam. It's a very nice word. I don't hear it very often, but I think I'm going to start using it more. Isam. Well, I hope you've enjoyed these new list of vocabulary words, and I hope that you are able to use them and memorize a few of them, and hopefully maybe impress your friends, or tell somebody off in a way in which they are not immediately offended until they go look up the word that you called them. So, language and vocabulary is a very powerful thing, and the more words you use, the greater your ability to express yourself in detail and with much more 
color and flare. So thank you for watching, and I will see you again. Thank you.